Let's talk about a guy who was, I think, very hyped up coming out of college. Someone who I think that we all thought maybe would have a bigger impact in this season than he did. Listen, Chiefs won a Super Bowl. They're you know happy with every decision they made. But still, I want to talk about Sky Moore. And was this a disappointment? Or is this fine and just part of the growing pains of being in the NFL? You look at his box score stats, and again, worth mentioning, he wasn't this, like, you know, he wasn't drafted first overall, right? He was a second round pick. He was 42nd on the consensus big board. It's kind of around where people thought he would go, but still, 250 yards, I think, was underwhelming in his rookie year. And, you know, wh- what's to make of all that? Well, let's watch some film and let's talk about what's to make of all of that. Uh, so we're going to start off with this play, which is going to be a pretty simple play. And to be honest, a good chunk of his 22 receptions in his rookie year were kind of just easy stuff, easy stuff to get receptions, I should say. Uh, just, just uh, you know, a screen pass, get the ball in his hands and see what happens. As you see, okay, that's what happens. He does get the ball in his hands. He's currently, you know, right here. There's a defender who's going to, you know, in position who, to try and make a play. But watch him do some really good stuff to be able to, you know, get to the outside and make a, you know, a nice little, uh, you know, run on that play. So for Sky Moore, it was a good job of being able to do that. And these were some of the things that Sky Moore was capable of. Uh, you know, of in his rookie year. Again, he showed flashes of this. We, we did not see a ton of consistency. We just didn't see a ton of him, period, in his rookie year. So it's hard to say too much, uh, you know, good and bad and stuff like that. But still, uh, you know, we did see flashes. You have stuff like this, which I think is a, a solid play. It's going to be, so the way that the Chargers are uh, running this play is it's going to actually be a disguise where typically you see the setup, you assume the player who's covering him at the line, or I should say is right in front of him at the line, right near the line of scrimmage, He's going to be the guy covering more. However, it will actually be that player will be rushing the passer, and the safety who is deep will pick up Sky Moore and he'll cover Sky Moore. So something you see happen, you know, relatively often. It's not the crazy, craziest play you'll ever see or anything like that, but still, uh, that's just what's happening here. And so Sky Moore, when he runs his route, I think does a good job of running the route, turns around quickly to make sure that he's open. Uh, Ball didn't come right away, but still came close enough that he was able to, you know, make the catch while the contact happened. Uh, you know, be able to help move the ball down the field. Again, a solid play. He was a solid role player, uh, really. I think that's how I would describe him in year one when we saw him on the field. So, you know, that's good. You'll you'll take a solid role player. Obviously, you prefer a superstar, but you'll take a solid role player. But he was also capable of doing stuff like this, which, to be honest, this is kind of what we thought Sky Moore would be doing mostly. No one, I think, thought he was going to be this elite outside receiver or anything like that. That's not really his game. He's someone who we thought would be a slot receiver. I mean, not just because of his build, but just in general, that's kind of how it works. You know, he's a very shifty guy, and we thought that that could potentially be how he can be successful. So this play you know, is going, it's a one-on-one matchup, and he's going to be going up, uh, you know, running a route that's a pretty good route against the type of concept, really. I mean, there's uh, no one covering over the middle of the field. I mean, there are players, there is, a, uh, you know, there are players who are in the middle of the field, but they're in man coverage. So the two safeties deep meaning mean that the kind of middle of the field area should be open other than the one receiver who will be covering Sky Moore. So for more, just win your one-on-one matchup and you should be all right. We'll watch how one this play begins. It's going to kind of fake as though he's going towards his left. It's going to fake as though he's going towards the bottom of the screen. That's what he's currently doing right here. So then when he cuts over the middle, he gets that little bit of separation. It's not massive, but the way this play is going to be won is in two different key factors. First, the throw, which, hey, you know, you play for the Chiefs, throws are going to be pretty good. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that too much. But still, that's the first way it can work. The other way, though, is he has to have the speed to make sure he maintains this window and is able to make the catch when the opportunity presents itself. He is able to do both of those things, and he's able to make the play. Again, is this superstar level talent? No, he is not coming out there looking like a you know complete star, but he's doing what the offense asks him to do. And it feels like that's a lot of what the Chiefs just wanted out of their receivers. You know, uh, in years past, they had Tyreek Hill who could do everything, but then they didn't have a lot of guys who could just go out there and have a complete receiving core. They constantly had guys who can do some things, but maybe can't, you know, do specific roles they needed, like being able to, uh, you know, win a quick route in man coverage over the middle. Having a guy like Sky Moore who could do it, that certainly helped. You know, Kadarius Tony got there, and I felt like they kind of had similar roles and sort of split time because of it, but as a whole, this is something that, you know, he, he showed flashes of being able to do. And he showed flashes of being able to do this stuff too, honestly, where it's going to be a, it's going to essentially be a one-on-one matchup on the outside. The defender who's covering him is playing very far off, as you see. 
right when this play begins, it's really going to be kind of his speed that wins this route, but not necessarily because of just being able to run by someone. You see how far off that Chargers corner is playing. If you can get someone this far off, you're in pretty good shape. I mean, okay, if you're running deep, it's going to be tough, but he's not. Watch as instead Moore cuts back down and he's able to make the catch and they're able to pick up a first down. You know, like I said, this isn't the uh, craziest play you'll ever see or anything like that. The reality is Sky Moore, I don't think at any point made the craziest play you'll ever see. But what do you expect with someone like Sky Moore? You know, what do you expect out of someone in that draft position in general? You you hope that they can come through and do good, and I think he did. Again, everyone that the Chiefs drafted practically was able to come in and, you know, make an impact, and he certainly made an impact. I think the question would be, you know, how much of an impact you could argue I would certainly argue he made more of an impact than a lot of the receivers that went ahead of him. You know, uh, Alec Pierce was one spot ahead and George Pickens. I think those guys probably had a bigger impact. But you had, uh, you know, Tyquan Thornton, uh, who, you know, I would say Sky Moore at least had as big of an impact uh, as uh, in year one. Like Wondell Robinson uh, did some interesting things, but I don't know if he was uh, necessarily, uh, you know, better than Sky Moore right away. So, uh, you know, John Mechie, he wasn't able to play due to you know, other reasons, uh, you know, due to just uh, his health, unfortunately. But for Sky Moore, he was picked 54th, and he kind of played like a fringe top 50 prospect uh, in year one, which is, you know, fine. You'll take that. He was still able to be an effective player, and the reality is, you know, he was one of the more effective players wide receivers left on the board. He filled a need for them and was able to do a pretty good job, I would say. So, uh, yeah. And again, it's one of those things where for wide receivers, they get so much more attention. I mean, that's part of why I'm making this video is because it's a wide receiver. But, you know, uh, you look at a couple of the other players that were drafted, you know, after him, uh, like Trey McBride, uh, who was very hyped up for the, uh, you know, Cardinals as a tight end, uh, or he was very hyped up when he was drafted by the Cardinals. Uh, you know, he's a tight end who I didn't think showed too much in his rookie year. Maybe it'll, it'll he'll be better later. Who knows? But for now, uh, you know, we don't know. Uh, some other players like Luke Gadecki, who is drafted a couple picks later uh did not show much of anything uh, for Tampa Bay you know Troy Anderson for the Falcons uh, guys who maybe you know could have great careers but it's not like the players behind are just like these like studs after stud after stud in fact the next guy on the list if you just look at the draft board the next guy on the list that I think had a key impact as a rookie uh you could argue I mean you know Cam Taylor Brett for the Bengals but then at 62 Brian Cook another Kansas City Chiefs player so at the end of the day uh they got someone who was a pretty solid role player at pick 54 and had an impact in them winning a Super Bowl you'll take that that's what you'll take he's already done you know what the draft capital you use to get him uh, he's already met that expectation he also had that key punt return uh in the conference championship game if you remember that helped set up the game winning field goal so he definitely had uh some some key impacts there and some some valuable uh stuff throughout the board but I also think it's fair to say for the Chiefs, I think they're hoping to get a little bit more out of Sky Moore. Maybe they could uh, un unlock a little bit more of his potential uh, in you know uh, his second year, which does happen. Again, young players, it takes some time. I think it's fair to say the Chiefs were looking for more, but aren't necessarily devastated with what they got uh, with more. So yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.